the sad deaths of people will not act as a deterrent for those still waiting in Calais to come across the channel. What will act as a deterrent, one would imagine, is the actual threat of deportation and the very real action when it comes to deportation. Do you believe that Rishi Sunak and his plan that was announced yesterday will result in more deportations, or do you think it's just more hot air? Well, first, let me say how my thoughts and prayers are with all of those affected by that tragedy and the people who died and the people who are still in hospital. And also put on record my thanks to the amazing response from the first responders from my constituency in Dover and deal. Um, in relation to the announcement from the Prime Minister yesterday, I think what we saw is him taking that personal responsibility for tackling this issue. Um, and he set out a number of things in relation to deportations in particular that you mentioned. Clearly, the Albanian deal was the, the big news there, the high number of people from Albania who have been coming in recent months. But I spoke to the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary yesterday. I've said it again in Parliament today. I think key to stopping the small boats is making sure that those boats don't leave France and that there is a joint security patrol across the channel between our two countries. That would bring an end to the small boats crossings, and that's why the Prime Minister needs to meet with, with uh, President Macron soonest. Yeah, I think a lot of people are very, very frustrated by the fact that, at least the optics of it, we seem to be giving a lot of money to the French, not getting a lot back in return. But Rishi Sunak said something yesterday that I thought he may come to live or die by, actually, which is the desire to clear the asylum seeker backlog by, roughly speaking, this time next year. That backlog stands between 90 and 110,000 from the figures that I can gather. If he doesn't manage to do that, does he have to go? Well, I think, you know, what we've seen are these numbers of people coming over increase and increase and increase, and that's put massive pressure on local services in, uh, in Kent and in Dover, on housing, on a whole range of local services. It's put pressure on the Home Office as well. But I was really shocked to hear that at the moment some uh, Home Office caseworkers are clearing cases at the rate of one a week, mm. um, which is clearly uh, not the way to clear a backlog. So I think it's absolutely right to identify that more needs to be done. But the bottom Bottom line is we've known for a long time that once you get here, your chances are that you'll stay here. And that's what we need to change. That's why these new laws that he announced are going to be important as they come through in the new year. But in the meantime, in my constituency, we can't wait because day after day, I'm worrying. My constituents are Dover and Deal worrying. My community is worrying. We'll get more calls like the one I had in the early hours of the morning saying they were bringing bodies into Dover. Yeah, indeed. Now, as long as we have the geography, which we always will, of the channel, we are realistically the only country now that will be dealing with migrant deaths in the water. Unfortunately, that looks like it's not going to stop until the boats stop. And the one way that maybe this migrant crisis can properly be sorted once and for all is if we cut the head off the snake when it comes to these human trafficking gangs. We keep hearing, don't we, that we have the best special forces in the world, that we're the best trained in the world. Would you support Britain leading the way when it comes to us tackling these human trafficking gangs and get our boys abroad and cut the head off that snake? Well, I've long said that we need to have uh, British officers working in France on the beaches as well as in the intelligence centres and uh, in all of the different uh, places, all the security areas that are involved with this issue. But the bottom line is this is organised criminality and we've just heard that you know people are able to describe step by step what's happening. Well, if they can describe step by step what's happening and do so very well, as your correspondent did, then actually why can't this be tackled and stopped? And that is the straightforward thing that we need to really concentrate on, tackling the gangs operating in northern France and making sure those boats don't get in the water in the first place. Is it not the humanitarian thing to do now to actually stop these boats? I've said for a long time that the absolutely moral and responsible thing to do is to stop the boats. People are put at risk in these conditions, in these incredibly treacherous conditions in the winter, but actually the channel is dangerous every single day of the year. These boats are completely unseaworthy and France should be stopping them and also stopping them in their waters instead of shepherding them over the Meridian Line. Because what, what I understand happened in the early hours of this morning is that this second tragedy that we've had was again around that really deep zone of the Meridian Line. That's why we need this channel joint security zone to really stop this once and for all and save lives.
Well, I think we all would like the French to maybe step up and do a little bit more when it comes to all of that. But just something that might be a bit unpalatable for the Conservative Party, but something that is necessary. As long as people are able to say, well, there are no real, proper, easy, safe and legal routes to apply for asylum, then people do have to start making journeys, if they so wish, like the ones across the Channel. That can result in deaths. Is it something the Conservative Party is just going to have to hold their nose and bear, that they're going to have to tell their voters, they're going to have to tell the public, they're going to have to tell the Tory members, we are setting up more safe and legal routes so that we can stop people coming across the channel? Well, we have safe and legal routes. Indeed, you know, as the Prime Minister said yesterday, more humanitarian visas have been issued than since the Second World War. We've had 450,000 uh, humanitarian visas issued, in addition to work visas and student visas and so on. There are plenty of legal and safe ways to apply to come to the UK. And that's what we need to be making sure the message is out across the globe. Don't take these dangerous routes. Don't put your hands, your lives, in the hands of these criminal gangs. Keep safe, apply the legal way, and actually hundreds of thousands of people do, and they come to Britain in the right way. This is illegal, organised criminality, and we must make sure it's brought to an end. Just very quickly, I thought it was interesting that Rishi Sunak himself made the statement yesterday and not the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman. She was just left to clean up the mess that has occurred, sadly, overnight and to deal with the tragedy. Do you think there's a little bit of a power struggle going on there? Does he want to try to take ownership of this so that he can take credit for it if it works and not her? Well, I think this is a major challenge facing the country and that the Prime Minister should be taking responsibility for it, as he is. At the end of the day, the solution, I think the key to solving it, lies with him in him having that summit with President Macron and agreeing a new and fresh approach. I've met with the Prime Minister and with the Home Secretary together. I think they're very both determined on this, but I want to see, for my area of Dover and Deal, an end to this. And I want to make sure that we're saving lives at sea, not having phone calls like today where we're bringing yeah. in from the sea.